today I would like to discuss with you computer hardware. Now, when we talk about hardware, we're talking about the components that you can physically touch. Now, in some cases, you shouldn't just go out and touch them, but we're talking about the physical parts or components of your computer. We're going to walk you through each of the major systems of your computer and what you would expect to see. Now, it is worth mentioning that the people who make your operating system, which is software which runs your computer, may not be the same people who make your hardware. Apple is known for complete control of their systems, making both the hardware and the software for both their OS X line of computers and their iOS tablets and phones, the iPad and iPhone. However, Microsoft, which makes Windows, doesn't make any of the computer systems that you use. Rather, you will buy one from someone like Lenovo, HP, Sony, or another company like that. Inside your computer, you will find that different companies make different parts. Some might be from Intel or AMD, while others would be from Texas Instruments, Western Digital, or one of the many other companies that make those products. If you have an Android phone, Google makes your phone OS, the Android. However, you probably don't have a Google phone. There are a few out there, but most people will have a phone that's made by another company. Maybe someone like Samsung, Sony, LG, or any number of other manufacturers. Even Apple has to purchase parts of their computers from other companies. However, because they control the hardware, they have full control over who's providing it. Whereas Windows and Google, they don't have any control over who is making the hardware components for their devices. In the old days, computers were looked at as being a certain way, either a desktop computer or maybe a laptop. Nowadays, computers can be found anywhere and everywhere, from your phone, your TV, of course your laptop, and many other places. New cars don't have a computer. They actually have several computers built into them. Auto manufacturers use approximately 30% of all the electronic chips nowadays. So to keep things simple though, we're gonna look at computers mainly as a desktop, laptop, and cell phone. But know that these could include other items as well because the computers all work generally the same. Now, I do wanna note that some of these will look very different based upon the make and model you have. And some might have components that are incorporated into one another. So we're going to try to look at a simplified model of this. We're also going to relate the computer components to something that you are probably familiar with. That is the human body. So the first thing we want to talk about is the motherboard. This holds all the components that your computer will have. It acts like the central nervous system in your body where your nervous system is responsible for receiving and sending signals to control our body, the motherboard actually does the exact same thing. However, instead of using nerves in your eyes to give one sight, the computer might use a webcam and a series of wires in order to get the image from your camera in your cell phone or your laptop to your computer. Instead of telling your arm to move, it's going to send a signal to your monitor to display the video of a movie you're watching or maybe the game you're playing. Motherboards are going to come in all different sizes, and the size of them will often dictate how many other components that they can include. They might be small, like in a little mini laptop or tablet. They might be larger, for example, in a server or desktop environment. Next up is the CPU, or the Central Processing Unit. This is like the part of your brain that makes decisions. Trying to decide what you want for lunch, well, your brain's going to help you with that. When your computer is checking to see if you just spelled that word right, it's using the CPU to help do that. CPUs can really only make simple decisions, calculations, and issue simple commands. However, they do it at multiple millions of times a second. 
And this allows them to make what appears to be complex decisions and calculations. Because CPUs operate so quickly, they generate a lot of heat. So you will almost always find a CPU with some sort of cooling system. Modern CPUs often have a fan and a heat sink, and some might even have a liquid cooling system. Next is RAM, or random access memory. And in order to make a decision or, or in order to issue a command, it has to know what to do it with. And this is where RAM comes in. Your RAM is much like the short-term memory part of your brain. This is the part that remembers, for example, and someone asks you, hey, what did you have for breakfast today? Or how was that last class? Or how do you think you did on the test? That's short-term memory. RAM is very fast. However, if you lose power, you lose whatever was stored within it. This means you have to have a way to store long-term information. That would be done with a HDD or SSD, a hard disk drive or a solid state drive. These allow you to turn the computer off, unplug it, and leave it for a week or two. But when you come back, you're still going to have your data. Hard drives are larger, both physically and typically in how much they're going to let you store. However, they are slower than the solid state drives. Solid state drives are newer and therefore they're more expensive. However, they don't take as much power to run and they're physically smaller, which means that they're much better for things like laptops. Now, you can also have long-term storage outside of your computer. It could be in the form of an external hard drive or solid state drive, or it could be maybe like on a thumb drive or an SD card. Some of these devices, like SD cards, were originally designed and in, intended to be used in a digital camera. A video card is the next thing you're probably going to see. It may be built into the motherboard as an add-on. It's just a separate chip that sits there. Or it might be a separate physical card. It's used to send and display information to your computer's monitors. Now, it may send it to a single person, like if you're looking at your phone or a laptop. Or it might go to a large display unit, like, for example, if you're using it to list tickets at a movie theater, or maybe plane schedules at the airport, or even video screens at a concert. After the CPU, the size and type of video card will vary the greatest. That's because what you have depends upon what you need and what you plan to be doing planning an intense 3D game, then you're going to need an expensive, fancy 3D card. Just surfing the web and typing some documents, you don't need all that much horsepower. And a much smaller, simple video card will work on it. Your video card works because of a special processor on it. It's called a GPU, or the Graphical Processing Unit. The bigger the GPU, the more cooling it will need, and thus the bigger the physical size of the card. GPUs are very specialized to handle graphics, and therefore they may seem faster than a CPU, but they're often limited to only solving certain types of problems. Audio cards nowadays are usually built into the motherboard. This will let you take in audio, like from a microphone, and play audio back. Therefore, it's going to serve the same function as both as a person's mouth and ears in a human body. You rarely need an external card for audio work nowadays unless you're doing something very specialized. For example, working in the music industry. Other devices on your computer will vary. Most nowadays will be external and hook up via a USB or another port on your computer. Some common examples of that would be things like your mouse, your keyboard, and a web camera. All of these are referred to as peripherals, things that are outside of your computer. And they usually allow for some sort of input or output, but they may provide some additional functionality to your system. On your phone or tablet, you might have something that connects via Bluetooth or some other specialized manner. And this could be anything from a credit card reader to an accelerometer, which allows you to track your orientation and even the steps that you take. In specialized computers, you might have different ways to connect that hardware to the motherboard based upon what the computer is supposed to be doing. For example, 
a car might have special sensors that are directly connected to the engine and the motherboard. And this will help make sure that the car is running at its optimal performance. Usually, in a modern desktop, we don't need additional internal cards outside what we've mentioned. I say usually because there's always that special case, but if you run into it, it's both rare and specialized. It means you're doing something outside of the normal computer operation. And that's okay too. 